Okay, so as we mentioned, I I'm Damian Bridges. I'm the CIO at uh, AAA Club Alliance, or ACA, and myself and Connie are going to be here today. And, and Connie's the lead architect and manages our enterprise integration team at ACA. So we're going to talk a little bit about the customer experience journey at, at ACA. Uh, and, and how we use an event-driven architecture and a composable CDP, or customer data platform, to actually accomplish that. And, and to give you a feel for um, what we accomplished and what the roadmap looks like and, and, and uh, how we're working through that process. So, yep. Okay, so first of all, um, a ACA, who's ACA? Well, it, in the United States, you may have at least heard of AAA. So AAA is the American Auto Association. Uh, it has roughly 60 million members across the United States, and we're comprised of 19 clubs, which really function as almost independent companies underneath that overall AAA umbrella, and they're geography-based. Uh, AAA Club Alliance, or ACA, is the third largest of those 19 clubs. Just to give you some context there. And what kind of services do we do at, at ACA, or, or AAA in general? Well, it's a membership organization, but what business services do we provide for that membership? The primary thing that most people think of is the emergency uh, roadside service capabilities. So if, if you're out and it's 1 a.m., I, I don't know what you're doing out driving at 1 a.m., I'm not, I'm not gonna ask that question, but let's just say you break down while you're doing that at 1 a.m. and you contact us, obviously our folks will come out to help you either repair the vehicle, help tow you somewhere, wherever it may be. Um, but we also have other services offered within that membership as well. Like we do have brick and mortar car care buildings. So if you have to actually have your vehicle repaired, we do that as well. Uh, we, we do sell insurance as well, mostly property and casually like home and auto. Uh, but there's a life component to that as well. And we also have a travel business. So, um, you know, whether that, if you're going on a vacation after this conference and you need a little break to recover from everything, uh, we're, we're happy to help you book a cruise, all the travel that goes with that. So multiple different scenarios that we do within the uh, AAA as a, as a business. So l let me jump down to, I, I kind of mentioned when we first started the customer experience, um, and that's really the focus that drove everything behind it here at, uh, at ACA. So. Um, I, I mentioned the services that we're doing, but as you can imagine, for, for us, it was really critical to figure out how to optimize that customer experience across multiple different touch points. So this slide just kind of tries to illustrate, if you kind of make the loop around the outside of it, a lot of the major focus areas about how we interact with our customer base. So for example, if you just start with the online digital, of course, the web and mobile app, you know, all, all these programs are, are really multi-year programs where we constantly are trying to evolve and grow those areas and optimize that business, I'm sorry, the customer experience at each of those scenarios. Um, so I mentioned the digital, we also have the omni-channel piece. You can think of that as our contact center, where, which handles multiple channels, whether that's um, phone calls, or your text messaging us, your email with us, or web chat, anything like that where, where an individual consumer is trying to get in touch with and, and talk to an actual agent on our side. That's managed by our omni-channel platform. Um, and then of course, once you actually are talking to an agent or an associate, uh, and I should mention that omni-channel piece gets that, that handles those conversations, whether you actually make it all the way to a person or if it's something that a conversational bot can actually handle for us, all that's managed that same platform. Um, and then of course, once you're actually talking to an associate, whether that's on the phone or face-to-face -face in one of our stores, that, that they're using our CRM system to manage that, the, the associates are. And then of course, there's the marketing communications that we do out across the multiple channels as well. So multiple different ways that we uh, uh, interact with our customer base. Uh, and all these have individual threads that are beefing up the capabilities in each one of those. But our challenge was, that's great, but how do we really empower that interaction? And not just optimize the personalization within one channel, but empower us with the ability to do it in a consistent way across all those channels. And so, not, not surprisingly, you see the blue box in the middle, right? That, that's the hub. That, that's the secret sauce that helps integrate and empower that customer experience across all those channels. So, multiple years back, we kicked off a new data strategy at ACA that has multiple components underneath that thread. 
Um, one of which is you know, a cloud-based big data analytics strategy that includes kind of traditional analytics like data warehousing, but also all of our data science and AI capabilities are kind of all integrated together in the same platform. Uh, so if you, uh, you know, the, for just the standard type of predictive AI models that are out there as well. So predicting what is, what's your likelihood to renew your membership, how likely are you to buy insurance, and anything like that. All those hundreds of models that are running, all the results of those are integrated into that same data environment. But separate from that analytic piece, the part that's most relevant, well, the analytics is relevant to help us understand what's happening at all those channels but to help us actually service and drive the interaction while it's happening. There, there's a third leg of that data strategy that's our real-time integration, and we have real-time customer profiles that act as the hub for that. So, so that's the area where I'm going to talk most about um, here today. So. I'm not surprised, I mean, you've, you've heard it in almost every session, probably the last couple of days. Uh, we, we do leverage an event-driven architecture to support that real-time customer integration discussion that we were talking about. So I'm, I'm preaching to the choir with this group, I know, but uh, we, we could, uh, events for us in this scenario is basically any change to the business domain, right? So may, maybe you complete a step in a business process or you have some sort of state change in that core business entity. All the, the systems that own those processes or that business entity basically are responsible for publishing that as, as a change event for us to our, our integration architecture. So for us, that could be anything from you abandon a shopping cart on the website, or again, if for whatever reason you're, you're out at 1 a.m. doing probably things you shouldn't be doing that late, and you have a, a road service scenario where you need help, just opening that road service ticket is another example of a business change event that gets published into our integration architecture. And then, of course, we have multiple downstream um, consumers that can subscribe to all those in, this, in the normal PubSub environment uh, to figure out what do we do with that, that change event that's been published. And that can do multiple different things. It can be do anything from kicking off a downstream business process, like a customer communication or marketing channel, um, or it can just be, frankly, synchronizing and updating data that, that's sitting in another downstream application that needs it. And for this customer profile scenario, that, that, that's an example of what's happening there. So as real-time events are happening in these other systems, where, rel where it's appropriate, they're one of the many services that subscribe to those changes is refreshing that customer profile in real time so that we kind of have a, a, a current picture of what's going on with that individual at any given time. So, so let's, let's pull some of those pieces together just for discussion purposes here then now. So, um, so again, the, the hub for us in this scenario for the customer experience are these real-time customer profiles. At the moment, that happens to be running in our Google Cloud environment, um, mostly because a lot of our data environments are sitting there. So like our data warehousing, our AI environment, a lot of that is all Google and GCP based. So at the moment, that's where those real-time profiles are sitting. And because the data warehousing and data science environment is so robust, we use that as a seed process to kind of pre-populate those on a daily basis with the macro level aggregated view of what happens and including all those data science models. But obviously there's a lot of things that happen with a customer intraday that we don't want to wait as sort of some batch process. So that event driven architecture that we're talking about accepts uh, change events from all of the other systems and subscribes to update that, those customer profiles in real time for anything that's critical. So again, it, and then that profile is available for use at all these downstream channels. Right? So, so for example, the, the, it's critical that, it, I'm using the roadside example, if you're broken down on the side of the road right now and, and you're calling our call center, you're probably calling about that road service ticket, right? So we need to know in real time what the status of that is on that profile, no matter what channel you're going to, so that that channel knows how to use that information to optimize and personalize that experience. So, so and for us, that real-time um, event-driven pub-sub architecture that keeps that profile synchronized happens to be WSO2 based, but behind the scenes for all of that. So. Um, and you can see some of the partners that we've partnered with at those multiple different touch points. Uh, but if I just pick an example, if you call the call center right now, uh, Genesis happens to be the platform that we're using for that omni-channel solution. You, you call in, we don't know who you are yet, right? But we have the phone number you're calling from. 
So we can take that phone number, make an API call to our real-time customer profiles, do a look up there, say, hey, do we have any matches? If so, hey, here's Damian Bridges and his profile, what we know about him. Uh, that the Genesis platform can then use that profile to steer what, is going, what they're going to do in the actual routing logic. That can be anything from helping to eliminate steps in validating who the member is. It can be changing who we route the call to, the prioritization of the call, the messaging that we play in there. All that is controlled within that contact center platform. But the real-time customer profile that gives us the, the latest and greatest view of that customer and what's going on with them within the company is provided by that uh, customer data platform in the middle. And the same thing happens on the website. If you go to the website and you're doing something there, the website, again, makes the API call to the CDP, uh, which brings the platform back. And in this case, we have an Adobe platform there that manages the personalization on the website itself. So um, it seems simple and logical, right? But, it, but it's, it's pretty robust, actually, in the way it worked. Um, the, the data warehousing, data science feeds are fairly easy. Uh, the the real-time, as you guys know, event-driven architecture piece takes more work. You have dependencies to be able to identify what all those events are, to be able to tap into those systems and process them. Um, but this has been extremely successful in the last couple of years for us. To be honest, we knocked out all the original use cases that were put on the table, and I think the business has been so surprised with the capabilities that they now have that, frankly, it, it's forced them to step back and say, wow, we, we didn't even think about all the things we could be doing with this now. <laughs> Excuse me. So they're really, it's forcing them to rethink how they manage that customer experience and do the personalization across all these channels, which that's a great place to be in, right? When, you, when you're IT, you can provide a solution that empowers the business with those sort of capabilities, that, that's where you want to be, right? So, so we're very excited about where it's sitting. And I would say while the frameworks are built, the, uh, where the business goes with it, they're still relatively immature and where they're sitting about with what the capabilities are about how they optimize that experience on the business side. So, uh, so with that, I'm actually gonna turn it over to Connie to talk about uh, our, our journey with WSO2 and the underlying architecture there. Um, thank you, Damien. Um, hi, everyone. Um, so I really wanted to put the slide together to give ourselves a little bit of perspective. Uh, we are a very lean IT shop. We have under 150 IT employees. And uh, less than 10, more precisely, about eight people do all of the integration work, build APIs, maintain this environment, <coughs> attend meetings, uh, you know, and make, make the whole thing tick. So we do believe in open source, but we're not on a bleeding edge of, uh, you know, early technology adoption by any means. Uh, but we do want to align ourselves with companies who are innovators, and WC2 happens to be one such partner for us. So as you can see, we started with one ESB instance when WC2 was a really small company. We like know personally a lot of these guys. Uh, and we spent a whole bunch of time increasing our capabilities, right? We went from simple, so based web services to uh, data services to analytics to API management just increased capacity over time. And then you can see that at about 2012, we reached some sort of logical stopping point where it was at enterprise scale with a lot of servers and services, but we needed to focus on just delivering value to our business. And uh, for about 10 years, it kind of stayed in this limbo we also learned through that time that we're really good at understanding our business domains and developing for our business integration-wise, but we're really bad at maintaining the operating systems and keeping everything patched just because it's that lean organization, small IT team challenge there. So a couple of years ago, we made the decision to go to uh, WS2 Managed Cloud. And uh, 
Uh, everyone here probably has their own story about that. It's, uh, you know, it, it's nice, it's fun, it's ugly, you want to cry sometimes. Uh, but it's important to, uh, you know, have the right people around you to help you. So WS2, of course, is amazing at this. But I also want to call out our partners at Deucer East. They helped us a lot. They still help us maintain all of this. They're here, right here, if you want to talk to them later. Uh, so it took us about a year to actually lift all of our workloads into the cloud. And we're finally fully in the cloud. So uh, it's quite a journey. And uh, you know it, it has been largely successful. It does give us this ability to really implement event-driven in a new, robust way, uh, which supports what Damien was just talking about. So this slide is a little bit messy. I apologize. Hopefully, you can see all of it. Uh, on the bottom uh, is basically our enterprise uh, with uh, a lot of disparity in applications. We have a lot of applications. Uh, some of them were built when uh, digital dinosaurs were around, and uh, some of them are fairly modern, like Salesforce, uh, etc. Uh, but we kind of attack each one, uh, you know, based on whatever patterns work with that particular technology. So we create a service layer out of every application that we. Uh, using API Gateway and micro-integration uh, surface to our API consumers in various different flavors. Uh, we also have the data layer and the event layer on each application uh, where we use different patterns. Sometimes it's uh, database triggers, sometimes they're platform events, uh, sometimes they're a mixture of uh, all things. So as our customer engages with us, whether it's by phone, text, website, or whether they can come to our um, um, retail stores or call us. All of these applications are somehow involved at, at some point. And uh, we generate a stream of events with which we have processor, processors for, and uh, these events are being handled in real time. They're loaded in our CDP. Uh, and uh, all of the supporting systems, like our telephony, uh, make data dips, like Damien was uh, explaining earlier, to create that knowledge, de-anonymize the customer, uh, make our processes more seamless, uh, help our associates, and also create some interaction data for us to understand what the customer actually wants. Uh, so. As we do this, we keep pushing this profile to our partners, like Adobe, Sprinkler, uh, social media, and that creates another layer of uh, real-time user experiences uh, that essentially create frictionless interaction. Um, the next step here for us, and it's in the dotted outline, uh, is to basically start collecting uh, information about the customer's activities with us through various channels. Right now, we'll try it with our website. Uh, what we're attempting to do is just collect uh, all of the browsing information, uh, all of the form submissions, or all of the login events uh, that are happening on the website. Uh, and we're going to process it in... Uh, uh, Google Cloud using uh, serverless and uh, uh, create some real-time data, feed it into the CDP platform to help us understand in real time what this customer is actually looking at so that if they choose to contact us, uh, we might have a good idea as to what it might be about. Outside of road service calls or travel plans, it, it also might be something that they were just looking at on them, you know, in our digital channels. So with that, um, I'll, I'll uh, hand it off to Damien. 
Yeah, just a couple, a couple extra things. Just thank you very much, Connie, by the way. And just a couple more things before we open it up for questions. So um, while this has been extremely successful so far, it's one of those scenarios where you're never finished, right? There's always more um, uh, capabilities that we're looking to bolt onto it. And beyond just more data and more integrations coming in there, we're certainly looking at things like the core technology that the customer profiles are sitting in. While it's working great right now, we, there, it, I described it as a composable CDP because we view as all the different modules and components and capabilities related to that customer profile as being things we can kind of compose and put together. Just like at the moment right now, the storage profiles are in GCP's uh, Cloud SQL. All, we're using WSO2 as the event-driven architecture framework. We, we don't plan on changing the WSO2 pieces, but we're definitely evaluating the optimal storage piece there. And, and other capabilities for those of you that are close to uh, kind of the market in general around customer data platforms or CDPs, you'll, you'll notice there's a couple things that are missing from that, like the ability to build, real, for the business to build real-time customer segmentation on top of those profiles, um, and then to have the business be more enabled to figure out, as Connie was kind of alluding to, you know, it, it's more than just the poll pieces, right? The slides I talked about earlier, you've got the, the website or the call center systems, polling, like, like asking the CDP a question, but there are scenarios where we want to have the CDP stream the, the, as events are happening, stream those customer profiles in the form of segments or target audiences out to downstream solutions that are driving marketing campaigns. What, like Connie was mentioning at the top of the page, things like Facebook campaigns or Google advertising. We can do that today, but it's a little more cumbersome than we would like. So we're reevaluating some of those core capabilities and where they fit into that as part of this as well. So, so those are some of the big next steps we're looking at and uh, 